Good morning and welcome back to this very special episode of Sun Up on 7. Just before the break, we were joined by the Honorable Tracy Tigger Panton, who was discussing the convention results and her way forward and how women can start partaking in politics. And we are now going to uh, one of a, a hard conversation per se. And we're here joined with Miss Michelle Irving from the Women's Devel who's Women's Development Officer, sorry. She's joined us via Zoom and Miss Anne Kuvas, who's an educator. But before we get into this subject, we would like to play a short clip from Trevor Noah about a particular circumstance that everybody at this point should know. So could we bring up that video? To a story that seems fully tabloid, but I think deserves a little more awareness from the general public. It's, it's because it touches on something that is more sensitive and more serious than people would like to admit. I know everyone thinks it's a big marketing stunt. Oh, look at the coincidence. Kim is launching a new show, except two things can be true. Kim likes publicity. Kim is also being harassed. Those things can be happening at the same time. Yes. Because I'll be honest with you, what I see from this situation, I see a woman who wants to live her life without being harassed by an ex-boyfriend or an ex-husband or an ex-anything. You may not feel sorry for Kim, you know, because she's rich and famous, because of the way she dresses, because she appropriates black culture, because she tells women they're lazy, because she broke the internet and then didn't put it back together, whatever, you hate her, whatever. But, but, what she's going through is terrifying to watch and it shines a spotlight on what so many women go through when they choose to leave. You know, people always say that phrase to women. They go like, why didn't you leave? Oh, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you leave? Yeah, because a lot of women, women realize when they do leave, the guy will get even crazier. It's... So with that clip there, they were talking about the whole Kanye and Kim, Kim Kardashian debacle. West uh, debacle. Right. Correct. So that is the discussion that we're having here today. Why is it hard to leave a violent relationship uh, such it, as this? Yeah, it is, it, is, it is a complicated situation. It is complicated. Um, and, I always, and I always say it. I say it many times on my Facebook page. I say it every time in my facilitation of workshops that I do. It all begins from home. You have to learn to empower your girls and let them know that it's important for them to understand their worth. And the problem is when people get into these situations, especially women, it has to do a lot with self-esteem and it has to do a lot with fear. It has to do with, I'm leaving, but when am I going to? Um, if you have kids, that's another excuse that some of our women use. You know, we have our children and they need their father. So as women, naturally, we think of ourselves first all the time and you think of trying to figure out how we can peacefully make this situation better. And I think you saw it with the Honorable Tracy Panton, how much she's trying to make it as peaceful as possible. Right. Um, that's what we do as women. We try to be project fixers, but we can't fix people, but we think we can. Right. I want that's, to bring Miss Irving yeah, into this good. conversation here. Miss Irving, good morning. How are you doing good this morning. morning? I am well, thank you. Okay. I, I want to ask, as a woman development officer, how, as you heard Ms. Kuvas just uh, uh, speak about the, the trying to maintain some level of, of peacefulness in the, in the whole equation here in a, in a violent relationship, how can you develop a woman to a point where it is, or to find the strength to leave a violent relationship? So um, there are several things. Um, thanks very much for having me, and thanks very much for the conversation. I think that oh, I've been following good. your conversation since morning, and there are several keywords that I heard, and it plays into the issue of uh, women in violent situations and women being most at risk when um, the time is um, for them to leave. Several things. One, we are living in a patriarchal society, as you guys said. So that means that men rule, and the value of the, the, the most valuable person is the man. And so he is able to control a situation. And so even if women are taught at home, for example, to be empowered, to be leaders, to do all those things, we still see that at the end of the day, you feeling that uh, at times, 
that um, if the man is not in control, then you are at risk. So a lot of times, as, your, uh, um, as Ms. Annie said, a lot of times women try to be peacemakers so that then we don't, we don't cause any ruckus. Uh, but sometimes no matter what you do, the problem is still there because it's an issue of power and control. We need to understand that. And I sincerely feel that we should go beyond the family and look at the society because it is how then the society put measures in place to ensure the protection of those who are most at risk and to ensure that if they want to leave a violent relationship, that they can leave so in peace. And so even if we think about relationship in terms of um, all the things, if you're married, it is the dead to us part. Um, the social, the, the, the source of cultural norm is that you shouldn't be leaving from one man to the next. So, so you try your best to stay. And so oh, there are a lot of different messages that converge and keep you trapped in the situation. And the messages are real because we see women who, are, who have been killed when they try to leave because you should stay there, you should be controlled, and you must not leave. So we have to, we have to close ranks around those who see that they need to leave this relationship. We have to all, like what the clip that you show, Trevor was saying, he's saying that no matter what, we have to close ranks. This is a particular issue that he's talking about, but he's saying that we have to close ranks around Kim, uh, who is even a very rich and famous person. And if she's a rich and famous person who has all the resources in the world to support her and she's going through this, imagine women or girls that are in difficult situation and even GBV sometimes affect men and boys as well. So those who are in situations of disadvantage, of situation of violence, situations of control, situations where they are not able to make the decisions to support themselves, to help themselves, then we see uh, the very real re um, outputs, which could be femicide, they're dead. Right. Thank, you for, thank you for sharing that, um, Michelle, because as you rightly said, whenever we think about how patriarchy works, it's about who has the power and who's able to give commands and you do what and you do that, especially as, as it relates to assigning roles specifically agenda roles within, within our community. And I want to like, help you to like, follow the conversation that Ms. Irving did just now with. What are some of the messages that our society puts out there that makes, women, that makes it hard for women to leave these relationships? Well, as what Ms. Irving said before, um, it's, so, I, 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 I will always make this a stance and I will always say, I strongly believe that parenting has a lot to do with how you are raised because it becomes with nature, nature and versus nurture. Okay. That's a natural psychological thing there. Um, we raise our boys differently from our girls. Um, our boys, education-wise, um, they're slow learners, we call them, but the girls are more cognitive, they're more respectful, they're more peaceful, they're more constructive. The hidden's the reason why many boys don't stay in school because school is very um, constructive and, and it's, in, it's, it's a routine. Boys are into competition, they want to compete. Um, that's why they do well in science and they do okay. well in math and while our girls do well in language arts um, Because those are two different types of subject areas and it deals with two different types of skills And so when it's when it's math and science our boys excel But unfortunately it comes to the point where if we do not teach our boys to respect our girls They're gonna grow up men who won't respect women right and the cycle continues and then society accepts it because our home accepts it because you, your environment is one of the ways of teaching you how to be. So if you're in a home and you see your dad um, being the boss and telling your mom what to do, how to do it, and that's what she does, then he grows up thinking, okay, so this is what should happen. And if any girl tries to not follow that stance, then she's being disrespectful. She's not being as submissive as, submissive as she should be. And she's not following the patriarchal type, type of thinking. Hence the reason why we have so many problems in leadership roles, like what Miss Tracy was talking about. I mean, she was going up against who? A man. Who, who, a man who is very competitive because that's nature versus nurture. And here she goes trying to make sure everything goes well. She's trying to be peaceful in all of it, but he's looking at, I want to win. That's why you guys are in sports. 
because you want to win and you do whatever it takes to win. Um, I remember the guy who used to do cycling that won seven times. I think his name, I forgot what his name was in the United States, but he had to use doping stuff to win seven times. They're competition, Fishing, they're right. competitive. So our society needs to start changing that atmosphere and the policies and procedures need to change too when it comes to you getting out of those violent relationships. But you won't get into those violent relationships if it doesn't begin from home. Okay. Because for example, for myself, I was, my nickname was is Princess, it still is. So from the day I was born, I thought I was royal, you know. And so when I started getting older and start dating, there was nothing a man could tell me that was so sweet. Maybe it gets me diabetes. <laughs> but there was, nothing, there was no words that he could tell me that would make him feel like he's better than I am. Okay. We are here to compliment. The problem is we are competing against each other when we should be complimenting each other. But our women, most women understand that, but many men don't. They still believe that they're, they're powerful, that you should be listening, listened to, um, you should do what I say, you're not being the perfect woman because you're not listening to what they say. So we need to break that cycle from home. It doesn't matter what right. policies are there outside of our home, whatever tactics they use to get, for get us out of the violence, how about preventing it? not getting us into such a violent situation and for us to see the symptoms of how it looks like when it does become an abusive relationship. All right. I, I want to follow up a question with Ms. Irving. <coughs> We've just heard that it starts from home. How can we start developing our young girls from home? Our, obviously, it has to be from the parents itself. But how can parents empower their young girls to not fall into a system that is patriarchal, per se? Well, that's, um, well, that's, uh, which, which one comes first, chicken or the eggs? Right. <laughs> uh, patriarchy, patriarchy uh, dictates how the family will, 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 will function. Yeah. What will happen? Who will be, who will be the boss? Who will say what? Who will do what? Uh, and so um, we could go on and on with that. So um, the, the structures, the, the gender norms and the gender socialization that happens is what creates this. So when we see, for example, boys in sports, let's just take that, and the competitiveness and all of that, that happens within the gender socialization um, at home. We give boys um, the football, the uh, basketball to go outside and play, but that gender socialization and the girls to be um, the princesses, as, as they said, um, to, to, have, to have the... Um, um, chivalry, like for example, we saw what happened at the Oscars, for example, um, and, and many people, many women themselves think it's okay for um, a husband to go up and slap another man because he spoke of his wife. And I was like, well, she could more than take care of, of herself. I think she's a strong enough woman that if she wanted to respond with violence or respond with words or respond the way how she feels she needed to defend herself, she more than was able to, to do that. But he felt that his ego was um, bruised. Machismo has to come in there. And this was his role. So this is what he needed to do. So these are all gender constructs that is sanctioned by the society and then replicated within the family. Because the family will produce what the society says needs to happen. And so we see throughout history where then we, we have the, the change. First, the society says, Women are too emotional, they should not vote. They cannot hold leadership. And so we heard, I think the, one of you guys told um, your guest, uh, Honorable Tracy Ponton just now, that a woman said she would never support another woman because women are too emotional and they cannot rule. That has been, that has been said years and years and years ago. And so we still hold on to some of that, right? So we hold on to, to, to areas where women need to be in the, the private sphere and men need to be in the public sphere. So when, whenever women try to go out in the public sphere, she faces backlash and she faces that level of emotional, um, you know, um, torment. Sometimes it is not even, in some places, it is not even legal for women to go in the public without a male companion, as we see. And so we go on and on and on, and then these situations are then replicated, even in our education system. While we see men and boys mostly in 
in math and sports, um, math and sciences, this is not to say that women and girls would not be able to excel in those areas, but it has been traditionally uh, where men and boys go because it has been far more financially benefit for you, beneficial for you to be there. And we hear stories of women where they were told, you know, no, don't, don't come here in, in, in the math and science, go to the, the yeah. home class or go to the um, arts class and things like that. So it's not that they are not able to do it. It is that they are uh, either subtly or very, or very blatantly told, uh, you know, this is not a space for you. So we have to do two things. We have to, one, ensure that our societal construct have policies, laws, and principles. I think she has another. Ensure yeah. that the protection of women and girls are those people who are in, those people who are in violent situation receive the necessary support that are needed to ensure that their lives are protected and ensure that they are safe. And so um, we see that we in Belize have moved towards ensuring those systems are there. And we still have a ways to continue to go, but we are moving along that path. Ms. Michelle, as a, as a social worker, I want to ask you, because ultimately what we want to come up from this conversation is we want to have men um, meaningfully reflect on themselves and be like, how can we preserve the lives of, of women, ensure that women have a good quality of life? So if we can reflect on now, what are the things that men can do wherever they are in their space and say, let me do a self-check and this is what I need to work on for me to be able to ensure that women live a, a fulfilled life? I think that's a good, good point. I think that I see, I see with men Two things. I see that they are able to recognize, for example, um, that women are important in their lives. They, they can talk about their mothers, especially their grandmothers. And especially in our, our Belizean society, we know that women take a, a sometimes, a, 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 I want to say, an extraordinary role, a more than, a more than fair share. They, they do more than their fair share of raising their children, because many times they, they go at it alone. And so, um, but this is why, no matter what happens within the family, the pair, your pair in the society can sometimes influence you more than what happened in your family. Mm. So I was talking with this man, and you know, he, he seemed to think that um, he, he needs to play out this machismo uh, type of behavior even though he knows that, you know, the, 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 the sacrifice and the, the protection that would be needed for his mother and, and grandmother. So we need to look at men, rightly so, to ensure that they, um, they know that men and women should be valued equally and they should be treated as such. And that's what feminism is. Feminism is just understanding that men and women, boys and girls, while they have different biological function, we have the same, we have the same value. We have the same emotional, we are, we are both human beings. One, one they know a different type of animal than the next. We are both human beings, regardless of what our biological, um, our productive and reproductive roles are. And so we need to ensure that we respect, value, complement, and support each other. And this does not only happen within relationships. This also should happen outside of that. This should happen in, in the political leadership sphere. This should happen, we should see women and men complementing each other in the House of Representatives, okay. in the Senate, in the in whatever socialization socializing system in the legal system in in all the structures and right. so because we have to remember that that it's a it's a it's a the, the gender socialization it's a system it's a complex system that that is is run throughout all the fairs of socialization the family the society the education system the religious system and the media so we are all we are all participating either replicating positively or negatively some of these values. So it is definitely 
certain that we need a societal change on a whole, a whole revamp of the system for this. Sure, for sure. But well, thank, sure. Well, thank sure. you both nice for that insightful conversation there. Yeah. We really appreciate it, and I'm pretty sure our audience yeah. um, also appreciates it. Any, any last it. words, Princess Anne? Well, <laughs> it's Women's Month, right? Yes. You notice I have my cape on. <laughs> Superwoman for all the women out there in Belize. Um, superhero, superhero. Yes, superhero, superhero. <laughs> Um, where's the camera? I want to look straight at the camera. That one? Yeah. <laughs> know your worth, ladies. You got this. Happy right. Women's Month. All right. <laughs> so, Thank you both for that. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Michelle. Thank you, sure. Ms. Anne, for You're this welcome. conversation. Thank you very much. Take care. Wish you all the best today and for the rest of the week. And with that, we go on a commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking with Miss Cynthia Williams mm. and Mr. Magnificent mm. Stephen Okeke about sexual mm. harassment. It's an interesting conversation. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back.